Welcome, 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 my brothers and sisters. I am Elder Derek Strickland. Welcome to the Bible Lessons of Prayers YouTube channel, or this just may be um, inside of our Facebook group. So uh, welcome to all of the members there. Um, definitely, it's a joy to be coming back to you one more time. Listen, this lesson here, you know, this lesson here, this lesson here is a very, very important lesson. Uh, in the light of what we've been experiencing here in the uh, in our country, in the United States, with the school shootings and things of this nature, um, there's a lot of people that are grieving. There's a lot of people that are going through. There are a lot of people that are asking the the question that we all ask at some point in our lives is, why? Why, God? Why um, this happened? Why you have to let my child, why, why did my child go and be involved in it. Then they're asking themselves, why did I do this? Why? How come I didn't keep them home? So it's a lot of things that's going on right now. And uh, we definitely want to pray for people. Pray for people's mind. Pray for uh, people to uh, realize that God is yet in control. All right. So I want to ask you all to continue to pray for people uh, at this um, as you're looking at this uh, video right now it's been a few weeks uh, since the actual shooting happened at the school but um, all of our uh, prayers are with the families that lost um, their loved ones these little babies and um, this is I can't even imagine all right I can't even imagine uh, what it would be like to lose uh, a child it shouldn't be this way but um, all in all, God is yet good. God is yet on the throne. And God yet knows what he's doing. All right? So we're going to get into this lesson. And um, it's called The Importance of Forgiveness. And it's really um, amazing how uh, people can be in these type of situations and yet step up to the podium and say, on behalf of my family, we forgive this individual for the harm that they did to our loved ones. Right? It takes God. It takes someone with a made up mind. It takes someone uh, that really, really understand the power of forgiveness and the importance of forgiveness. Now, not only for the person that did the offense, but for themselves as well. So we're going to get into this. And, um, you know, I just want to ask you all to continue to pray for these people um, as they go. Uh, through this uh, situation. It's going to be a rough year for these families uh, as we get ready to go into the summertime. And, you know, summertime is normally associated with children running and playing and uh, summer camps and traveling and things of that nature. And all of that has been put on hold for these families. So, um, let's, uh, well, at least I, I would imagine uh, has been put on hold for these families. And, you know, going through uh, Thanksgiving and Christmas, Halloween, things of these, these type of uh, uh, holidays that children normally are very active in. Um, these are the times that they need us and that they need our prayers the most. All right. So let me get into this lesson. Um, the importance of forgiveness. The background reading is found in Mark eleven twenty five, 25, Luke 17, 4, Ephesians 4. 25 through 32 Colossians uh, 3 12 <coughs> excuse me 3 12 through 17 and um, 1 John 1 8 and 9 all right and our devotional let uh, reading is found in uh, Matthew 18 um, verses 21 through 35 and we have a central verse we all already know what the central verse is about right Matthew Excuse me, 6 and 14. All right. We have three key terms that I'm going to go over with, over before we actually uh, uh, open with our prayer and get into it. Uh, the three terms are offend, bondage, and obligation. Offend means to transgress the moral or divine law to cause difficulty, discomfort, or injury. Bondage, the tenure or service of a villain a serf or an enslaved person, a state of being bound usually by compulsion, servitude, or sub, sub, subju, subjugation, 
to a controlling person or force. Obligation. Something such as a formal contract, a promise, or a demand of uh, consequences or customs that obligates one to a course of action, something a person feels they must do duty. All right? So the, that's our uh, key terms, and uh, let's get into it. Let's open up with a word of prayer. Kind of Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you. Lord, we thank you for all your grace and your mercy. Lord, we thank you for the outpouring of your spirit. Now, Lord, I ask that you look over each and every one watching this video right now. I ask that you bless them right now. Touch, heal, deliver those that need to be healed and delivered. Lord, just ask that you continue to make ways and open doors. Lord, bless families. Lord, bless them in their home. Bless their marriages. Bless their business, their health. In the name of Jesus, Lord, their finances, oh God. Lord, I ask that you just touch their mind, Lord, that they may be ready to receive your word and believe your word, Lord. Lord, we thank you for what you've done and what you're going to do. Look on those families, God, uh, in Texas, oh God, that lost these families, lost these babies. Lord, I ask that you touch their heart. Lord, there's a void, Lord, in their heart that only you can fill. Lord, I ask that you go to each one of those homes right now and let them know that things are going to be all right. Lord, I ask that you will let them know, Lord, that you are there with them and that you are a comforter in times of trouble. Lord, we thank you for what you've done and what you're going to do. These blessed ask in Jesus' name. Thank God. Amen. All right. So, as you all can probably hear in my voice, I'm still going through this. I think I'm coming on the, <coughs> excuse me, on the outside of this. Still got this cough. So, there's no need for me to keep reshooting this video and Trying to do it over again without coffee. It is what it is. Pray for me, all right? So, <clears throat> let's go over these scriptures. The importance of forgiveness. Mark eleven twenty five. 25, it reads, And when ye stand praying, forgive, if ye have aught against any, that your Father also which is in heaven may forgive you your trespasses. Your trespasses. Luke 17, 4. And if he trespassed against thee seven times in a day, and seven times in a day turn again to say, turn again to thee, saying, I repent, thou shalt, shall forgive him. Declare sentence. No if, ands, or buts about it. If you follow in Christ, thou shall forgive him. All right? Ephesians 4, 25-32, and it reads, Wherefore, putting away lying, speaking every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. Be ye angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Neither give place to the devil. Let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him labor, working with his hands the things which is good, that he may have to give to him that needed. Let no corrupt no corrupt communication proceed out of thy mouth, but that but that which is good to use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be ye kind one to the other, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven you. That's powerful. That's powerful. <clears throat> We're going to Colossians uh, 3, 12, 12 through 17. Put on, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercy, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long suffering, forbearing one another and forgiving one another, if any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. And above all these things, put on charity, right? Which is the bond of perfect of perfectness, perfectness. And let not the peace and let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to which also ye are called in one body, and be ye thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all forms, rich, richly in all wisdom, excuse me, teaching and 
admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatsoever ye do in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. Colossians 3, that's Colossians 3, 12 through 17. We got John uh, 1, 8 and 9. First John 1, 8 and 9. If we say we have no sin, oh my God. Oh my God. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I'm going to read this one, one more time for the people in the back. 1 John 1, 8 and 9. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in <coughs> us. Verse 9, if we, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Wow. Let's go to our devotional reading, which is found in Matthew's 18 chapter, verses um. 21 through 35, and it reads, Then came Peter to him and said, Lord, how, <coughs> how oft shall my brother sin against me, and I forgive him? Till seven times? This is Peter. He's asking, he's like, well, seven times? You know, I don't know why he got that seven, but he's like, till seven times? Jesus said unto him, I say not unto thee until seven times, but until seventy times seven. Therefore is the kingdom of God kingdom of heaven likened unto a certain king, which would take account of his servants. And when he had begun to reckon, and reckon one was brought unto him, which owed him 10,000 talents. But for as much as he had not to pay, his Lord commanded him to be sold, and his wife, and his children, and all that he had, and payment to be made. Wow. Pretty hard, ain't it? Um, the servant therefore fell down and worshipped him, worshiped him, saying, Lord, have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. Then the Lord of that servant was moved with compassion and loosed him and forgave him his debt. But the same servant went out and found one of his fellow servants, which owed him a hundred pence, and he laid hands on him and took him by the throat, saying, Pay me. Pay me that thou owe it. Like, give my money, man. Give my money. Where my money, man? <laughs> Where my money, man? <laughs> for, for, for all y'all that know, you know, right? Um, and his fellow servant fell down at his feet and besought him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. And he would not, but went and cast him into prison till he shall pay the debt. So when his fellow servant saw what was done, there were very... They were very sorry and came and came and told unto their Lord all that was done. Then his Lord, after that, he had called him and said unto him, O thou wicked servant, I forgave thee all thy debt because thou desirest me. So did not thou also have had compassion on thy fellow servant, even as I had pity on thee. And the Lord was wroth and delivered him to the tormentors till he shall pay all that was due unto him. So likewise shall my heavenly Father do also unto you, if ye for, if you if ye from your hearts forgive not every one his brother their trespasses. <sighs> we got a lot to unpack. We got a lot to unpack. Here's our central verse, um, Matthew six fourteen. For for if ye forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. The importance of forgiveness. Is there someone you need to forgive? Is there someone that you need to forgive? I, I, I beg of you. You need to do that now. Do it right away. Don't even wait till this is done. Like, press pause and forgive this person. Forgive that person in your heart. All right? 
Many times believers find forgiveness hard, but it's necessary. Believers will find that they receive the healing and transformational power when they let things go and walk in the flow of forgiveness. So the believer must choose to forgive the person who trespassed against him if he wants the forgiveness of God. Many believers go from day to day have, uh, heavily nursing wounds from things that people have said or done to them. Then they find themselves struggling to make it through the day because of the weight of the baggage of unforgiveness. Unforgiveness is heavy, y'all. It's heavy. Sometimes they went, they want to forgive, but they are unwilling to let things go or don't know how to let them, let them go. <coughs> Often the need for revenge or the fact that they feel someone needs to pay for hurting them keeps them bound to unforgiveness. If they want to heal and be free from the burden, they must forgive and walk away from the burden of their past to begin living the abundant life that God has promised to give them. It is the will of God that all his children live happily fulfilled lives, not burdened with bitterness, guilt, hurt, or shame. But unforgiveness leaves a person with all of these negative powers working in his life. God's redemptive work offers the believer forgiveness for every sin and shame. He offers forgiveness for sin and gives the healing power the believer receives when he forgives others and himself. He says to the believer that if we confess our sins, he is faithful to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That's 1 John 1 and 9. Uh, forgiveness is a bomb that, uh, that heals the sin-sick soul of man. It deals with the thoughts and with the mind of man. Wherewithal shall all young men cleanse his ways by taking he thereto according to thy word. That's Psalms 119 and 9. When a person chooses to forgive another person, he chooses a life-giving experience for himself. This act will reconcile the person and give the believer a reconciling experience, experience with the Savior. It, it draws him close to Jesus and puts the believer closer to his master. It assures the believer that he is a follower of Jesus Christ. And he becomes a candidate to become a friend of Jesus. It deals with the ways of man. God desires that every believer mature to a place in him where he can be free of his pain of hurt, disappointment, and other painful things. But it all hinges on the life of unforgiveness. He wants his children to live a lifestyle of forgiveness, living, living where these things will not disturb their sense of peace. For, who, for whoever God set free must be free from the cares of this life. Forgiving others gives the believer the right attitude about himself and others. Once he forgives one person, it becomes easier to forgive others and allow the believer the privilege of receiving grace for his journey. Forgiveness does not make you forget the memory. Don't make you forget, right? <clears throat> but the memory is a scar from the wound. It will always be there, but it doesn't hurt anymore. You will sometimes remember incidents, but the incidents won't hurt anymore. Forgiveness is not just a request for believers, but it is a requirement if a believer wants to be forgiven and set free. He must forgive others, no matter how much he has been hurt. Sometimes believers will not forgive others because they feel the offender owes them an apology. But there are times when the offender will not apologize, but this does not free the believer from giving forgiveness, right? Just because they ain't came back and said, please, uh, I repent or I'm sorry, Doesn't, they ain't got nothing to do with you, right? They ain't got nothing to do with you. Uh, he is obligated to forgive if he never receives an apology. Apology. When he does that, when he does what is right, God would do what it needs to be done. Giving forgiveness to others helps the believer grow spiritually, emotionally, and physically because giving forgiveness releases the believer from the powers of the from the power of unforgiveness. Unforgiveness releases negative powers into a believer's life. It allows anger, bitterness, frustration, and many other opposing forces to be at work in the in their lives that will be very destructive. Uh, unforgiveness releases harmful and toxic forces that will help destroy the believer's physical life. 
It also has control over the life of the offended person, for it holds him in bondage. All right, we're gonna we're gonna wrap this up. The word of the word of the Lord encourages believers to be kind, tender-hearted, forgiving one another. It encourages believers to be positive in their actions towards those who offended. The word tells the believer that it would rather be better for an offender be in the middle of the ocean with a gigantic heavy stone around his neck than to offend one of God's least ones. Luke 17, 2. All right. Jesus tells the story of a man who owed an outstanding debt to his master. He went to the master, explained that he couldn't pay the debt back, and asked him to be asked him to please forgive him. The master had mercy on him and forgave him. He canceled the debt, and the man was no longer the man no longer had to pay the debt. Same man whose debt had been forgiven was owed a small sum compared to the debt was owed to his master. He went to the man and asked him uh, to pay him what he owed. The man who owed him told him he didn't have it. The man who had been forgiven his large debt grabbed the man roughly and had him thrown in prison for a little bit of debt that he owed. Jesus rebuked the man and said that he was unfair because his master had forgiven him and he should have forgiven the man who owed him. The disciples came to Jesus asking, how many times must we forgive our brothers who offend who offends at least seven times? Jesus said that he must forgive him at least seven. <coughs> excuse me, seventy times seven. The central thought for this lesson right here: forgive and be free, or don't forgive and be in bondage. There's four questions. Four questions to this lesson. Number one: Why is it necessary to forgive someone who offends you? Number two, how many times in a day should a believer forgive someone who offends him? Number three, what are the benefits of forgiveness? Number four, what happens when there is unforgiveness in the person's life? Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, listen. There are times that there are things that happen in this world and people are hurting because someone has hurt them and when the person that's been hurt has decided to forgive them the world would let me let me put it like this the world would say i don't know why they forgiving him look what they did he uh raped his son raped their daughter <coughs> he killed this this person got killed why are you forgiving him why are you doing that <coughs> As a believer, we have to know that that's the world talking. That's the mindset of the world. It's not the mindset of Christ, right? The mindset of Christ is to forgive, right? We are so blessed that Christ decided to die on the cross for us, that we may be <coughs> forgiven for our sins. He died for the sins of the whole world. And if we're following him, we must have the same mindset when it comes to forgiveness. No matter how bad it hurt, no matter what goes on, no matter uh, how lingering this uh, uh, feeling of, of hurt lasts, we must be able to truly forgive. You ever see someone that says, yeah, I forgive you, and then they throw that incident in your face for the next three years? Guess what? They didn't truly forgive you, right? When you're forgiving someone, even though you remember it, you're not going to throw it in their face and risk hurting that person, right? So, we must forgive, no matter what the situation is. There's not a situation that can go down in, in the life of a believer that we can't offer forgiveness to someone, all right? So um, when we see these people forgiven, you know, the family coming up to the podium, stepping up to the mic, hey, I just want to say that on behalf of our family, we forgive so and so and so and so. Right before the person is getting ready to go to jail, right? 
at the courthouse, right? You know, right? They the court the judge is getting ready to slam the hammer down and give them X amount of years or life. He gets one to say, I want to I want uh, we forgive you. Or on, on the backhand side of that, someone getting ready to get to get put to death, right? And uh, they say, do you have any last words? And <coughs> the person says, I want, I want the family to forgive me. Whoa, that's a whole nother lesson. Like we did that lesson, right? Getting ready to get put to death. You got any last words? I want the family to forgive me. I was wrong. Blah, 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 blah. That person is free. Right? That person is free as all outdoors. We have to learn how to ask for forgiveness and we have to learn how to give forgiveness. It's so important. No man knows the day or hour the Son of Man cometh. You don't want to be caught in unforgiveness. Let's forgive one another. All right? Count Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you. We thank you for our point of the Spirit. Lord, we thank you for this lesson. Lord, this lesson of forgiveness. Lord, I just ask that you look down on us, oh God, and forgive us, God, for every sin. Lord, forgive us, Lord, for every bad thought. Lord, I just ask that you look down on us and build us up, God, where we're broken down. Strengthen us, Lord, where we are weak. Lord, we thank you for your grace and your mercy. Lord, just ask that your, the spirit of forgiveness go over every person that's watching this uh, video right now. Let it be in their homes, in their mind, in the name of Jesus. As they go throughout their day, Lord, as they go throughout the day and as people are doing them wrong or, or people mean to do them wrong. Lord, I just ask that you let these people have the spirit of forgiveness on them. Lord, we thank you for what you've done and what you're going to do. Be blessed us in Jesus' name. Thank God. Amen. Amen. Listen, I didn't even ask you all to go ahead and subscribe to this channel. Like, if you like what you saw, subscribe to this channel. If you enjoyed this lesson on forgiveness, subscribe to this channel. Hit the subscribe button. Also, let me know where you're watching me from. Where are you watching me from, right? I've been enjoying reading a uh, few people that have been commenting. I think someone from Arkansas forgot where the other person was from. But it's an awesome joy to know of the reach of this um, channel. If you want to be in the Facebook group, there is a um, there's a link in the description right there so that you can go ahead and click that link and join the Facebook group. Facebook group just brings us closer. It brings us closer together, um, more of a, a family type uh, atmosphere where we can um, definitely uh, ask questions. We go live in there and um, you know we're going to be doing some in-depth studying in there all right so um oh if you want to be a blessing there's a cash app down there as well uh for people that want to be a blessing um to the to the um, channel to the uh, group and um you know you can do that if you want there's no pressure so <clears throat> the next lesson is gonna be yeah the next lesson all right, so after we talked about the power of forgiveness, the next lesson is knowing your purpose. I don't know if you all saw that or not. Knowing your purpose. Can't wait to go over that with you all. See you all next week, or you all see me next week. <laughs> and Derek Strickland, as always, it's my wish for you that you all be blessed. Then go out there and be a blessing. Peace.